Today, we will be looking at the birds in the genus Paranga, which includes the summer tanager and its closest relatives. These are medium-sized songbirds found in the Americas, known for the distinctive red, orange or yellow coloration of the males. For those interested, there is a document in the description with notable research papers I used for this video, along with the details of the sources for the images used. Paranga is in the order Passeriformes, or the Passerines. This is a massive order of birds containing over half of all birds with roughly 6,500 known species. If you think of just about any small bird, then the chance is that they are in this order. It includes robins, chickadees, woodcreepers, warblers, wrens, fantails, flycatchers, thrushes, finches, crows, buntings, sparrows, birds of paradise, and many more. Passeriformes has three clades in it. The smallest is Acanthaceti, the New Zealand wrens, which only has two living species. The next clade, Tarani, is much larger with over 1,000 species. These birds are mostly found in Central and South America and include the tatiras, peters, oven birds and tyrant flycatchers, among others. If you have been doing the maths, you will realise that these two clades pale in comparison to the size of the last one. This is Passeri. It contains the songbirds with over 5,000 species. This massive clade is where the summer tanagers we are looking at today are placed. Summer tanagers are in the family Cardinalidae, or the cardinals. This family is hard to define, with many of the species here only known to be closely related due to molecular analysis. However, many of the males in this family have bright reds, oranges or blues during the breeding season, and those in Paranga are no different. Their inclusion in this family is relatively recent, as before 2008 they were instead in Thropidae with the tanagers. They are now recognised as not being true tanagers despite their common names, so they were moved to Cardinalidae. The phylogeny used in this video derives from the work of Campilo et al. in 2019. It is worth noting that aside from this and an earlier paper looking at the phylogenetic relationships, I found barely any recent research into them, so many of the descriptions of these species are smaller than I would like, especially since they are all considered least concern and so are relatively common. They are similar in shape and habits to true tanagers, but their colours are much more reminiscent of other cardinals. Part of the reason for this taxonomic confusion is that the birds in Paranga have a different bill for most cardinals. Cardinals typically have a short stout bill for crushing seeds, but as most of these birds are insectivorous, their bill is longer and slenderer than is typically seen on a cardinal. Paranga is the largest genus in Cardinalidae with 11 species. They are all medium-sized songbirds notable for their bright red, orange and or yellow colorations. They are known for foliage gleaning which is the feeding technique some birds use for plucking insects from leaves. But they will also sometimes catch insects when flying. They prefer to stay high in the canopy. The genus name, Paranga, apparently originates from one of the now extinct languages spoken by the Tupi people of Brazil. Apologies for the pronunciation, but the word was Tea Paranga. This referred to a small bird, although it is not known which one. There are many species to have a look at today, so let's get started. The first species we're going to look at is the red-headed tanager, or Paranga erythrocephala. This scientific name is the same as its common name, as erythro is a prefix meaning red, and cephala means head. This name refers to the male's bright red head and chest. As you will quickly realise with the members of this genus, they are all very strongly sexually dimorphic, meaning that there are noticeable differences between males and females of the species. It is especially obvious with the birds in Paranga, as the males and females are often different colours. In the case of the red-headed tanager, while males have their red head and the rest of their body is a yellow-olive colour, females are much plainer looking with yellow and olive colours around the head, neck and back, but fading to almost white on their belly. Red-headed tanagers are endemic to Mexico, only being found along the Pacific coast on the western side of the country. They typically forage in pairs or small groups as they feed on insects and berries, and is considered least concerned by the IUCN. The next species on the phylogeny is the red-hooded tanager, Paranga rubriceps. Its very similar common name to the red-headed tanager is due to its sharing the same characteristic feature, its red head. Unlike the red-headed tanager, this is seen in both the males and the females. The two are still a little different however, as in the males the red extends onto their breast, whereas in the females it is restricted to only their head. The rest of their body is a yellowish colour, with black on their wings. Red-hooded tanagers are found in northwestern South America, preferring higher elevations on the slopes of the Andes in Ecuador, Colombia and Peru. They are found between 1,700 to 3,000 metres above sea level, or around 5,600 to 9,800 feet. 
They typically forage in pairs or small groups and are known to frequently join mixed species flocks. They are considered least concerned by the IUCN. The species most closely related to the red hooded tanager is the white wing tanager, Peringa leucoptera. Its scientific name literally means white wing, so both of its names refer to its most distinctive feature, the white bars on its otherwise black wings. This feature is seen in both males and females, although the two look extremely different, with males' entire body being a bright red and females being olive green, but in both cases their wings are black with two white bars clearly visible. Its distribution is discontinuous, so it is a little patchy, but can be found from Mexico, throughout Central America, and into Northern South America. There are actually four different subspecies, each found in a different location throughout this range. They are typically found between 1,000 metres above sea level to 2,100 metres, or 3,300 to 6,900 feet, although it can be found at lower altitudes in some areas. White-winged tanagers eat fruit, berries, seeds, and insects. That is the last species in this first clade. So moving on to the other clade, the first species is the rose-throated tanager, Peranga roseogularis. It is endemic to the Yucatan Peninsula and is only found in Mexico, Belize and Guatemala. Despite the small distribution, it is listed by the IUCN as least concern as it is still common throughout this range. As with most of these species, the common name comes from the male's coloration. The male has a rose-coloured throat and crown, while the rest of its body is a pale grey. The female has a yellow throat and crown instead, and its body is a more olive green colour. Unlike the last few species we have looked at, the rose-throated tanager is a lowland species, found from sea level up to 250 metres or 820 feet. Rose-throated tanagers are believed to be ant followers. Ant follower is the term used to describe a feeding strategy used by some birds where they follow trails of army ants to feast on the insects that are flushed out by them. The best studied examples of ant followers are the 18 species of ant bird in the family Thamnophilidae. Rose-throated tanagers have been observed following swarms of army ants, so it is assumed that they are ant followers, but there have been no comprehensive studies looking at their diet, so this is more an educated guess than a confirmed fact. The summer tanager, Peranga rubra, is the type species of this genus. The type species of a genus is the definition of what types of organisms are in that genus. The title of type species is given to the species in that genus that is the best example of the general characteristics shared by members of the genus. This is also why I've called this video the summer tanagers. The genus doesn't have a common name, so this seemed like a fitting one to give it. Summer tanagers exhibit the strongest sexual dimorphism of any bird that we have looked at so far. The males are entirely red, except for their flight feathers which can be a darker colour. Females, by contrast, are entirely olive green. Males are the only entirely red bird in North America and so are extremely distinctive. Summer tanagers are migratory. They breed in the southern United States of America and Mexico, and then migrate south to Central and South America for the winter, being found as far south as Peru and Bolivia. There are two recognised subspecies. The one breeding in the west typically has paler plumage, but longer tail and wings than the other subspecies that breeds in the east. The summer tanager has a very similar call to the American robin, and amateur bird watchers will sometimes confuse the two if they are relying on sound. Summer tanagers typically have a shorter call than robins, however, lasting only 2-4 to four seconds. Here is a quick snippet of what that sounds like. <laughs> For comparison, here is a clip of the American robin. As you can tell, when listened to side by side they are notably different. However, if listening out in the real world, it would not be hard to confuse them. The next clade in this genus is disputed as to whether it represents a single species, the hepatic tanager Peranga flava, which would then have three subspecies, or if they are three entirely separate species. I have them as separate species in the phylogeny as Compilo et al. treats them separately. Since that is the study I used to create the phylogeny for this video, it is what I am following here. Having said that, Compilo et al. didn't manage to separate out these species completely, as they found that the tooth-billed tanagers have two populations, one in the east of their range and one in the west. They found that the eastern ones were more closely related to hepatic tanagers and the western ones more closely related to blood red tanagers. I have not reflected this in the phylogeny, but it is worth noting. 
Since much of the literature is very confused about them, it is hard to find out information on the separate species, so I will cover them together as a clade. The word hepatic refers to the liver, and this group is apparently labelled that because of the male's red-brown coloration. The hepatic tanager is found from the southern United States of America, south to Nicaragua. The tooth-billed tanager is found from Costa Rica, south to Bolivia. And finally, the blood-red tanager is found along the eastern side of South America, from Guyana and Brazil to Argentina. They are insectivores, and like their close relatives, feed using foliage gleaning. The male is almost completely red, while the female is yellow. The shade of colour of both the male and female will depend on the species, but the differences between them are subtle. These species have not really been studied much outside of their status as different species or subspecies, so I don't really have anything else to add about them, so let's move on to the next species. The scarlet tanager, Paranga olivacea, is another very distinctive bird in this genus. The male has an entirely red head and body, but black wings. As you are likely coming to expect with these birds, the female is olive green, although her wings are also black. Interestingly, the scientific name of this species is actually named for the female, with olivacea meaning olive-coloured. This is despite the attempt of early scientists to get the name Erythromelis, or the red and black one, to stick. Olivacea was the name given first, so by modern conventions, that is the name that is used. It is the smallest of the Paranga species found in the United States of America, but is found just north of the Canadian border all the way south to Bolivia. They breed in the far north of their range, in the USA and Canada, and then will migrate to South America for the winter. They mainly eat insects and other small invertebrates, or they will opportunistically feed on fruit as well. They will use a variety of feeding strategies, but one that we have not looked at yet is called sallying or hawking. This is a feeding strategy most associated with the flycatchers. It is where the bird will sit on a perch, fly on a short loop to catch an insect, and then return to the same perch. They will also use foliage gleaning, or forage on the forest floor to feed, so they are more of a generalist or an opportunistic feeder. The scarlet tanager is one of the most well-studied species in this genus, so we do have a good idea of its breeding habits. Males arrive at their breeding ground first, with females arriving a week later. They usually lay four eggs, although this rarely can be as high as six, or as low as one. The eggs hatch between 11 to 14 days later. The exact time of year for hatching will depend on how far north the scarlet tanagers are nesting. Northern tanagers may do this as late as early September, while those further south typically nest in June or early July. Moving on to the next species, we have the western tanager, Paranga ludoviciana. Like in the other species we have looked at, the male has much more striking colours than the female. Unlike the others, the male does have breeding plumage too. In the breeding season, it has a bright orange head, yellow body, and black wings. Outside of the breeding season, its head only has an orange tint, and the body is yellowish with an olive tint. The female, by contrast, is a much drabber olive-brown colour. They are found along the western side of North and Central America, but like many closely related species, they are migratory. They breed in the United States and Canada, and then migrate to Mexico and Central America, being found as far south as Costa Rica. Like the scarlet tanager, they are opportunistic insectivores and occasional frugivores. They can feed by sallying and foliage gleaning, and their exact preferences will depend on the habitat they are in. They typically prefer open woodlands and grasslands, avoiding areas with continuous canopy cover. They can be found at a wide variety of altitudes, from sea level all the way up to 3,000 metres or 10,000 feet. The female takes about four days to construct her nest using twigs, grasses and pine needles. They typically lay five eggs at a time, and these take 13 days to hatch. The young are fed by both parents and fledge at 11 to 15 days. These nests are frequently parasitised by the brown-headed cowbird, and this can drastically reduce fledgling success of western tanagers. Western tanagers are common, however, so they are still classified as least concern. The last species in this genus is the flame-coloured tanager, Paranga bidentata. It has four subspecies, which are patchily found in Mexico and Central America. This distribution that seems a little patchy is due to it preferring forests and grasslands at higher elevations. It is found from 800 metres or 2600 feet above sea level at the lowest point, up to almost 3000 metres or 10,000 feet. The male is bright red, leading to the common name of flame coloured. Its wings are black with white stripes. The female has a yellow face and chest with an olive back and black streaks. The colours of its wings are not as pronounced as the males, but are still darker with lighter bars on them. The flame-coloured tanager feeds on small arthropods and berries. While it prefers to feed alone or in pairs, it will sometimes join mixed-species flocks. 
It follows several of the feeding strategies we have already looked at, like sullying, but has been observed ambushing ants, carrying wasp larvae, and eating both the ants and the wasps. That is the last of the 11 species in the genus Paranga. These birds are notable for their pronounced sexual dimorphism and the beautiful coloration of the males. However, I hope I have made it apparent how much about these amazing animals we still do not know. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for listening and feel free to suggest another group of animals you want to see me cover in the comments.